Welcome back for our next video lecture here for chapter one. We're going to begin moving into some discussion of uh, cellular structure and macromolecules. Hopefully you guys can figure out that macro means large. These are the large biologically important molecules that cells are built from. So we're going to be moving into uh, an introductory part of the class that deals with some basic chemistry information that you need to know to move forward in microbiology. And so my assumption here is that you've had this basic content before, either in an intro biology class or if you graduated from high school not too long ago, you had it in high school, or you covered this in your Biology 201, Human Anatomy and Physiology 1 course. So if none of those things are true for you, then you will want to go into uh, the Unit 1 area and find the chemistry module, basic chemistry module, um, which is inside that chapter one folder. Scroll down all the way to the bottom. And that has a series of more detailed lecture video clips about the basic chemistry information that you need for your biology classes. That's completely optional, but if all of this information sounds completely Greek to you as you go through the rest of these chapter one lectures here, you may need to work through at least part of those video clips in that optional chemistry module. All right, first of all, let's start off here with uh, some pieces and parts, which is bigger. And hopefully you can kind of, if you've had some of this before, we can go through these and hopefully you can figure, uh, figure this out on your own, but I'll go through it. Um, we want to develop a field. This is not a chemistry class. You don't have to have, be a chemistry expert or have taken freshman chemistry to make it through microbiology. But we do want to have a feel for the organization of cells and which, um, which structures are smaller building blocks for the next size up. So let's take a look at what we've got up here. We've got a series of terms. And which one of these is the biggest? Hopefully when you're looking on there. Hopefully you're picking Tasmanian devil. That's a whole animal. Obviously that's not something we would study in microbiology, but it's where we, again, we want to kind of review and get a feel for the levels of organization of, of living things. All right. So the Tasmanian devil was the largest. What's the next largest thing? Hopefully you were thinking heart since that's an organ in the Tasmanian devil. Um, and believe it or not, they do actually have hearts. I know Tasmanian devils have a reputation for being mean, but they do have hearts. And uh, all right, so what is a heart built from? What would be the next thing down the list? Hopefully you were thinking cardiac muscle tissue since organs in a multicellular complex organism like a, like a Tasmanian devil or a human is built from organs and organs are built from tissues. Tissues are built from, what did you learn in your prior classes, cells. Now things get a little more complicated. When you start breaking apart a cell into its building blocks, what's the next largest thing on the list? And if you've studied this before, hopefully you're picking proteins. A protein is a large, what we call a biological macro molecule, very, very large molecule and, and proteins play many, many different roles in cells. All right. And then if you break apart a protein into its building blocks, what's the next smallest thing on our list? Hopefully you're picking amino acids. So we hear about amino acids all the time in biology as building blocks of proteins. If you break apart a protein, a protein is composed of a whole bunch of atoms put together in a particular pattern to make that protein. And one type of atom that you have a lot of in proteins would be a carbon atom. And finally, electron here is the smallest thing that we have on the list. All atoms contain protons and neutrons and electrons. So electrons are the building blocks, or one of the building blocks of an atom. And something else I want to draw your attention to here, this cell, cell size and scale comparison from the University of Utah. I'm going to click on that and hopefully bring it up. This is a good thing to check out. Because it gives you, uh, this was put together by the University of Utah on a website called Learn Genetics. Okay, here we go. It's back. And uh, this is a really good little, this website is great. If you guys took uh, anatomy and physiology at, at uh, Calhoun, you might have done the mouse party exercise when you were covering the 
nervous system, which uh, deals with recreational drugs and how they work in the brain. Um, but this is another little interactive that was put together by the University of Utah on this Learn Genetics website. And I really like it because it gives you a feel for the relative sizes of things that you study in microbiology and other biology classes. So scroll through here and you can see you're starting off with a coffee bean and a grain of rice and that's a sesame seed. And then as you zoom in, it's giving you the relative sizes. It's giving you some perspective. There's a grain of salt, sodium chloride. And then as you keep zooming in, here's an amoeba. So that's a single cell type of protozoan. Um, so that's the first microorganism we see here as we keep zooming in. There's a human egg cell like you study when you take biology 202, and that's a big cell for a, for a human cell. There's a paramecium, that's another type of protozoan. Skin cells, like in your epidermis, when you study that in human anatomy and physiology one, there's a sperm cell over here. Red blood cell, we keep going in. Here's a baker's yeast. So yeast are single cell fungi. So you can see yeast are pretty small even compared to human red blood cells, which are fairly small for cells in our body. And if you keep going on, these are chromosomes. So the DNA inside your cells, and they look like that when, they, uh, when the cell is getting ready to divide. So again, that's giving you a feel for how small we're getting here. Mitochondrion, that is a organelle in, in eukaryotic type cells where most ATP is made. You keep going lysosomes, you study those and in some of your classes those are uh, membrane covered compartments with lots of digestive enzymes inside eukaryotic cells like we have. There's an E. coli bacterium so now we're finally down to the level of what a, a little tiny bacterial cell would would look like. And if you keep going and you keep going now this is about the lower limit this E. coli cell is getting close to the lower limit of what you could see with a bright field light microscope like you would have in a typical biology laboratory. If you keep going, finally we're getting down to the level of viruses. So there's measles virus, there's HIV, influenza. You can kind of see some of the relative sizes here. Uh, size designations, if you look closely, HIV 130 nanometers across. NM stands for nanometer. Nanometer means one one billionth of a meter. A meter is a little over three feet. Uh, this thing that looks like a little alien spacecraft over here, that is called a phage or a bacteriophage. That is a virus that infects bacteria. So even bacteria can be infected with viruses, which can be kind of strange to think about when you first start studying microbiology. There's hepatitis virus. Rhinovirus causes a lot of common colds, very small. And if you keep going, now you're getting down to um, beyond the microbe level. We're getting smaller than that. Here's a ribosome. That's a machine in cells that builds proteins. Hemoglobin proteins, like you have in your red blood cells that transport oxygen throughout the body. Um, we keep going, keep going. There's a phospholipid. Those types of molecules build your cell membranes. Methionine is a type of amino acid like we were just talking about. Those are filled in blocks of proteins. There's a glucose molecule, water, carbon atom. All right, that's getting down to the picometer range, so even smaller than what we were talking about with the viruses. So that's kind of a, a neat little interactive that gives you a feel for the relative sizes of many of the things that we'll be talking about in this class. Oops, hang on. Let's move on to the next slide. It's going to make me click through all these again. Sorry, guys. Hang on. All right. So we're going to, in microbiology, we're going to hear a lot about different cell types, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. And, and what does this mean? You know, what are we talking about here? So all living things on the planet are uh, truly living things, and this is excluding the viruses. Viruses are not built from cells, but all true life forms are built from cells and those cells fall into two categories prokaryotic and eukaryotic and so this is an um, an image from a previous textbook that we had this large light blue, blue blob here is a eukaryotic cheek cell like inside of the mouth cheek 
And all those darker blue spots you see on there are bacterial cells. So that's kind of giving you some size perspective. Prokaryotic cells are generally much, much, much smaller than eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are generally larger and more complex. And what are some other differences? Your prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. A nucleus is a membrane covered compartment where the, the chromosomes of an organism would be located, the DNA. Prokaryotic cells lack elaborate internal organelles. Organelles are membrane covered compartments in a cell that have specialized function and you may have studied those before in an earlier biology class. All right, so among, you know, what, what are your prokaryotes? Who are your prokaryotes? Bacteria and the archaea are prokaryotic organisms. They're all single cell organisms and they have this prokaryotic cell type. Um, everything else is a eukaryote. So that includes us, plants, um, algae, fungi, the helminths, your parasitic worms, all of those types of things fall into the eukaryotic category. So beyond these kind of basic things, some other key differences between your prokaryotic and your eukaryotic cells, it gets down to the molecule level, the structure, a very detailed level. Um, when we study RNA later in the semester, when we get into genetics in chapter eight, we'll talk about a special type of RNA called ribosomal RNA, and that differs between your prokaryotes and your eukaryotes. Um, the lipids in the cell membranes can differ composition of cell wall. So cell wall is a structure that some living things have that's outward from the cell membrane. It's an additional layer and we'll be hearing a lot more about cell walls as we move through the semester. Okay, so why do we care about this? Why do we care? Um, a key reason that we care is that many pathogenic organisms are bacteria. They fall into this prokaryotic category. And our cells, on the other hand, are in the eukaryotic category. So lucky for us, there are enough differences between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic that we can exploit. We can take advantage of some of those differences. So many of the, when you have a bacterial infection and you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes an antibiotic drug for you, most antibiotic drugs that we take for bacterial infections um, screw up something in prokaryotic cells without harming our cells. So those drugs take advantage or exploit some difference that exists between the, the cell types. Also, if you think about it, okay, so bacteria are prokaryotes, but if you have a fungal infection, if you have a protozoan infection, or if you have, you're infested with a helminthic worm, uh, those are all eukaryotes. And we have far fewer drugs that you can take to treat infections with any of those types of organisms. And the key reason for that is because their cells, when you get down to the cell level, their cells tend to operate in much the same way that our cells do. So we just don't have very many drugs that will screw them up without also screwing us up as well. Also, toward the end of the semester, when we get to the immune system, you guys will see that even our immune systems are able to, your immune system's job is to fight things that invade your body and are foreign to your body. And as we'll see, your immune system is actually programmed to key in on some of these prokaryotic cell features that are not features of our, our own cells. So it'll come up quite a bit during the semester. And again, in terms of keeping track of, you know, start thinking about what organisms are prokaryotic and which are eukaryotic. And it's easy, bacteria and archaea are prokaryotic, everything else falls into the eukaryote category. Okay, another reason why you might wanna care about prokaryotes versus eukaryotes is if you haven't taken your T's entrance test for nursing school. So a lot of this information may show up in questions on the, the T's test. All right, this is a figure from your textbook. So eukaryotic cells, this is a generic eukaryotic cell and eukaryotic cells are generally larger and more complex on the inside, and they have generally numerous membrane-covered organelles, like little mini organs that have their own jobs that they're supposed to carry out. And so this diagram is showing you, again, a kind of a generic, uh, this is supposed to be an animal-type cell. And this structure over here is called a flagellum, which allows the cell to move around. 
in it. Now, most eukaryotic cells don't have a flagellum. Sperm cells do, as an example, and then some types of protozoans have flagella, as we'll see when we move, uh, start talking more in more detail about those types of microorganisms later. But it's just put on here as a possible structure on a generic animal type cell. Here's the nucleus in purple. Uh, the purple pancakey type things surrounding it are called that's the endoplasmic reticulum. Orange structure over here is the Golgi apparatus. Uh, and so here's a mitochondrion. Here's another one over here. So you may have studied those types of structures before. Those are all features of eukaryotic cells that you would not find in a prokaryotic cell. Oh, let me back up over here. And down here on the lower right hand side, here's our generic diagram from your textbook of a, a prokaryotic. This is supposed to be a bacterial cell. And we'll hear a lot more about basic structure of bacterial cells when we get into to chapter three. All right, so what are cells built from? So if we're looking at a eukaryotic cell or a prokaryotic cell, what are these built from when you break them down? What are the chemical components? And again, you know, we want to develop a good feel for uh, the levels of organization. What are bigger molecules? What are smaller? What are even smaller? And so if you've ever taken a biology or chemistry class before, you've learned that cells are composed of inorganic compounds and organic compounds. And I don't want you guys to stress too much over organic versus inorganic. Uh, organic compounds are carbon-based molecules that traditionally have been associated with living things. So they have a carbon backbone. They also tend to have lots of hydrogens. Inorganic compounds tend to be smaller molecules, um, not as like, there, now there are inorganic compounds that contain carbon, but they're not as generally widespread carbon-based as organic compounds would be. And then ions, important ions that you study in biology, like calcium, ions, sodium, potassium, you no doubt discussed those in AMP when you took your AMP classes. So let's think about our, um, organic compounds, the major building blocks of cells. These are large molecules, and we will discuss these in more detail as we move through uh, the rest of chapter one. But you want to be sure that you do review your four major types of macromolecules and their building blocks. So what are those? Proteins. And what are the building blocks of proteins? Hopefully you're thinking amino acids, uh, carbohydrates. Building blocks are monosaccharides, or you could also say sugars. Lipids. Now, there are various types of lipids, um, but many lipids fall into a category called triglycerides, which we'll talk a little bit about later. And the building blocks of those are glycerol plus fatty acids. And then finally, number four, you've got your nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, and your building blocks of those are your nucleotides. Okay, so that's all information you're going to want to know as you continue this class or any biology class for that matter. All right, so for the rest of chapter one, we're going to discuss these important biological macromolecules, these big organic molecules that uh, are the main building blocks or components of the cells of all living things.